WebRTC needs to deal with NATs, network address translators, and firewalls. It needs that because it needs to pass firewalls when you're doing things peer-to-peer, -peer, directly from one browser to another, but also when you need to deal with media servers because our traffic runs over UDP. So here's what we want to do. We want to take media directly from our Red Hat on the left and set it to Brown Hat on the right. In order to do that, we need to be able to traverse through the firewall that, that Brown Hat is behind, is behind it. If we translate it to network, then Brownhead is inside a private network. His IP address, his local IP address is you know, 10.0.0.1, for example. And he's got a public IP address that was given to him by the NAT device that sits on the edge of the network, of his private network, into the public network. The problem is that we only have his private IP address, so we can't really reach him because trying to reach 10.0.0.1 when you're on a public network is kind of impossible. We need to know which NAT to direct our traffic to. In order to solve that, we can ask, okay, Brownhead can go and ask what his public IP address is. He knows it is 10.0.0.1 because that's what his machine knows. But he can also go to a STAN server on the public network and ask, what do you see as my IP address? Who am I? The STAN server will reply back, giving him his public IP. He knows that because this is what STAN server so on the network. Now, Brownhead can send that information of his public IP address to Redhead, and Redhead can try and access directly to him. Okay? So two things happened. Brownhead did on the right, now know his public IP address, and by knowing that he created a pinhole in the NAT device that tra the traffic from Redhead can come into him. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it isn't enough. It isn't enough, for example, when I've got a client that is going and asking the server, what's my IP address? It gets an IP address. But if he will ask someone else, he will get a different IP address, either because the public IP will be different or because the port will be different. This happens with something that is called symmetric nuts, and they are a real pain. The mapping here is done between both the source and the destination IP address, and we cannot use this kind of a mechanism of STAN to do that for us. So STAN servers that give us our public IP address will not work with symmetric NATs. What do we do in such a case? We use TURN. TURN is traversal using relays around NATs. And what it does is simply says, if I can't get my public IP address to work, I will simply use a TURN server to relay all of my traffic through that TURN server. This comes with a price. It eats up more bandwidth on the server side. It eats up server CPU. Okay, so it costs us more to allocate and run this service. And it adds some latency, depending on the location where I put my turn servers. It also adds more moving parts to my service, which is always a headache. If we try to compare stun to turn, then the purpose is slightly different. With stun, we're trying to get the public IP address. And with turn, we're trying to relay the media. We try to use stun servers almost always. That would be the frequency and turn servers sometimes when we must. Operating soft costs of STAN are so inexpensive that we c you can find public ones for free. Turn servers are a lot more expensive, especially at scale. There's no quality impact to, scan, to STAN, and there might be a quality impact to turn, depending how you deployed it. In general, the frequency of use of turn servers is, is 1 to 20% of the sessions. This will change and vary based on the user base that you have and the actual use cases that you're dealing with. So we have two options. We can either use STAN. There's an easy backend, but it doesn't always work. TURN, which almost always works, but eats up backend resources. The way we deal with that fact is by using ICE. ICE is an algorithm that makes a decision if we're going to use STAN or TURN. The way ICE works as an algorithm it is that it resolves the different connectivity issues by conducting connectivity checks. Each client in an ICE negotiation will collect the addresses that he has as possible candidates. It can take host candidates, the local IP addresses that might be private addresses. It will take server reflexive candidates. This is my public IP address as provided to me by a STAN server. And relay candidates. These are turn server addresses that the turn server gave me to use. 
Once we have these addresses, we can send them these candidates via SDP. We can trickle them if we want to. And then we can start connecting. Um, you know, we can try these connections by receiving the candidates from the other side as well. This approach can take a while. So this was you know, a, a short overview about Stan, Turn and ICE and a little bit about Natraversal. You can learn more about this in the webrtcglossary.com and you can look at my training courses at webrtccourse.com. Thank you.